So it's been a killer spring, but uh, the fish are up in the river spawning. So uh, we are looking on these shallow humps back here in these little backwater spots where fish kind of hang out. Uh, they don't really feel the urge to, to spawn. Usually smaller fish, but this is what we're gonna stay on for right now till they come down the rivers. So if you come down here on the chart, you see this hump right here. Uh, the stripers sit right inside there. And uh, we're not really big on fishing spots. Like we don't have a whole bunch of spots that we go check each spot. We don't do that because the fish are always moving. But this is one spot that we know smaller fish, resident fish will, will hang out in here. And it's by a hump. You won't mark anything until you get ready up here on this hump. So we're gonna double anchor on the hump, set out some chunks, and catch a whole bunch of really, really healthy striped bass. Let the ones up in the river spawn, do their thing, come down. And we'll do this in the meantime. But if you look here by that chart, where that hump is, where all the lines are close together, that's that contour. And what I like to do is put the front anchor on the hump, we'll pull off, stretching out that front line, and then Mike will drop a stern line. Never double anchor with a stern line in rough uh, conditions. Only when it's flat calm, and even still, it can be dangerous. You never want your stern into the wind, into the current, into the waves. You will flip your boat, you will kill people. All right, see the hump coming up here? Right here. Give me one second, Tommy. I wanna to make sure I see the fish before I uh, put that anchor down. Side scan is very important for this because we're very shallow. When you're shallow, your regular sonar has a very narrow, narrow cone. Doesn't look at very much water, so side scan is the ticket. See, we got lots of bait in the area. That's all bait in the area there, too. Okay. But we know there's bass in here, and that's what we're looking for. I'm gonna show you what a, what a parking lot full of straight bass looks like here in a minute. Okay. There we go. Found them. Far, they just moved over just enough to Yippee, dude. Uh, chasing that bait, I bet. <coughs> All right, so between 159 and 160. Stand by, Tommy. Go up to the front. Actually, look, look right here. Look at all those fish right there. Those are all striped bass. They're on the hump. They moved up onto the hump. That's crazy. That's where they went. Hundreds of them. They're all up on top of the hump in only six feet of water. That's why we couldn't find them. Look at them, they're chasing. Those white marks, they're, they're moving. Awesome. All right, so we came through here on the lower hump, marked them, went and got bait, come back a half hour later, couldn't find them. They actually moved up onto the hump. Stand by, Tommy. <clears throat> Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna go for record Tommy. Let her go. All right, now, he didn't throw that anchor until I had the boat going in reverse. Right now, Mike is getting the stern anchor ready on the stern line. And I want to back, back off just till we get off to the edge of the hump. You'll notice Tommy's paying out line. And the goal is to set the boat on a transition. So we don't want the boat up on the hump. We want to see us look at those stripers right there. We want to be on the edge of the hump. So we can cast up on the hump and we can cast into deeper water. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, so he's still paying out. 100. We're at the end? 100. 100. Oh, 100, good. Okay, we're almost down to these contour lines and when we do, we'll have Mike set the stern line. We're almost to the edge. Lots of bass. Go back forward. Okay, bottom starting to drop down. We're almost on the contours. Looking good, looking fishy. All right, so contours are there. So we want Mike to drop his anchor in about 10 feet. 
All right. Come on, let me get him back to 10 feet. So many stripers. Out, out, okay. out, out. I got it. Okay, All right, Mike, let her go. And Mike's letting it off the side, not the stern, not by the transom. Why, Mike? There's a lot of expensive equipment behind there. That's all right. All that transom is. Look yeah, at this. man. Look at this fish finder, John. That's what you call a pile of striped bass sitting right there. Snotchel, that's right, a snotchel. That's a full snotchel. Wow. Okay. So you see, I don't know if you guys noticed how long, you, obviously you can't feel how long that was, but we, even after we marked the fish, we still spent another 20, maybe 25 minutes making sure we're on it just right. Now Mike's gonna get a little bit out already, Mike? Yeah. All right, Tom, you can take a little in, just to tighten it up. He's gonna pay some out. On the, stern, on the stern while Tommy takes a little bit on the bow and the idea is to get those lines nice and tight. We're on a lot of fish, which is good, but don't anchor ever off the stern unless you are experienced, unless you're confident, unless you've studied the, uh, the rule, I'm sorry, the applications that are on the Coast Guard website because anchoring off the stern is only done in situations like this, we're in a harbor. Why is that? That's probably good, Tommy. Hmm? What happens? Anchoring off the stern. If you anchor in the stern in any kind of, stand me with that. If you anchor off the stern in any kind of weather, even a two foot or one, well, even a one foot chop in some boats, and if we lose the front anchor for some reason and you swing, your stern will be aiming into the waves. So you'll have waves crashing up against your transom. It'll fill your boat. It'll roll you right over. It'll kill you. I had a friend almost die in a, a few years ago where he was anchored off the front. He left the boat in gear. He thought he was in neutral. The boat crawled forward. It was in a big chop. He didn't know. The boat crawled forward and got the line, front line in the prop. It wrapped in the prop, stalled the motor. And now when it swung, now the anchor is tied to his prop, right? So it swung him around. As soon as the anchor set, the first wave came over, rolled his boat over. In wintertime, 44 degree water in North Carolina. Almost killed him. So I'm going to hook it, John. Okay, so here's what you have to do. You have to lift the scale prior to putting it through, otherwise you lose the point of the hook. When the hook comes out, there'll be a scale from the opposite side. You have to remove it. You hook it through the thin silver part of the meat, which gives the fish the opportunity to pick it up, and the gap of the hook is able to work better because there's less meat in the way. Well, these have weights. We don't really need the weight right here because we don't have a lot of current right here. But if you do, just use one ounce if you can get away with it. Go as light as possible. All right. All right. No free spool. Engage it. Full drag. Clicker on. We have mono on everything here. Soft tip rods, striper stealth rods, real soft tip. Mono line, very stretchy. And the idea is the fish can swim by, pick up your bait. It won't feel the rod tip because the rod tip is buttery soft. The line even stretches because it's mono. Fish can pick up the bait, start to swallow it, swim off. And as he swims out off, he'll pull that circle hook up out of its stomach. It's an inline circle, which is the law now. And that hook will catch him right in the corner. When he feels it, he's gonna take off. And by the time he does, the rods are reloaded and he already took all the stretch out of the line. That's exactly what we want. So if you're doing this with braid, I'm not saying you can't catch fish doing it. Lots of people do, but you're at an extreme disadvantage if you're chunking with braid. Any life, any type of bait with braid is bad. Because the braid is very sensitive, it's no stretch. You can feel the fish, but the fish can feel you. And you don't need to, to feel the fish if you put it in a rod holder, so. Huh? No point in having the braid, unless you have bad line capacity and you need to thin braid for line capacity. Other than that, you want mine. You got 40, sorry, 30 pound and 
30 pound leader. All right, guys, here's a close look at the rig here. It's just a basic Carolina rig. You have a barrel swivel here and anywhere from two to four feet of leader down to your circle hook here. This is a Mustad Demon Circle. It has a straight shaft. I prefer a straight shaft with no snells. It's just what I prefer. It's a regular clinch knot here because this is mono, but if you're using fluorocarbon, use something like a Palomar knot. And you could change your length here depending on, you know, how clear the water is. You want a longer leader in clear water. But if you go too long, you can't cast well. So this is probably about four foot. That's a good basic place to start. This is 30 pound mono on 30 pound mono. Some people ask why do you use a swivel if the leader material is the same strength. And the reason is because in current, or if you're just reeling the bait in, your chunk will spin and it'll twist your line up. So always use a swivel even if it's just a dead piece of bait and you're using the same leader material. Now these three glass beads, I always use glass beads with live bait because I like the noise it makes. Uh, these are the wrong size though. Sometimes it's very hard to find the larger size. If you find a larger size with a hole that slides over your knot, it will protect your knot some. In this situation, it really won't protect it. It's just gonna slam into it just like the lead will. You don't need beads for cut bait, but we swap these rigs out for live and cut bait at certain times, so I have a habit of putting beads on all of them. Also in current, these will make some noise if the bait is, you know, being slammed around on the bottom with the current. So it can't hurt to put them on. This is just a two ounce weight here. We go anywhere from one to three usually, and if I can go with zero, I go with zero. Again, this is just a Carolina rig. This is a, a very commonly used rig, and it's my favorite rig for striped bass fishing. You can use a what's called a fish finder attachment goes on here. It's just a sinker slide. If you want to, uh, it'll have a clip on it so you can change out your weights. So you can go to heavier and lighter during the day. It's just a little sleeve that pops on here with a clip hanging on it and the sleeve slides. It's called a fish finder weight clip or just a fish finder rig. But that's it. Right there, you can see it's a large. This is about an eight aught demon circle. I usually go pretty large with uh, circle hooks and uh, depending on my cut but bait uh, piece, but anywhere between seven and nine aught is a good place to go with a chunk. If you're in fresh water using smaller pieces of like cut herring or something like that, you might go all the way down to like a two watt, depending on how finicky or how small the fish are. Ron, you see a rod bend over? Okay. If you see a rod bend over, if it's screen, if you hear the rod clicking, taking out drag, just pick it up and fight the fish. If it's bending over and it's not clicking yet, you want to crank first. So just, just go right to the reel and just crank it until you can't crank it anymore, it starts to click and then take it out of the rod holder. Okay. So if it's clicking, just pick it up. If it's not clicking, just crank until it does click. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see me? Bounce the weight. <clears throat> okay, yeah. One more on that side, one more on that side. All right, I'll meet you at the bow. Yes, sir. Three straight, skip. Nope. Lock it down, baby. Right, it's got me a chunk. See, we do have some current now, so uh, the ones with weight, we're going to keep up current. This doesn't have weight, so we're going to have okay, to reset. reposition. Yep.
You see that? Yeah, what was that? The sliding weight. So sometimes when you cast the weight and the bait separate, and right before the bait, the weight hits the water, if you stop it, it'll stretch a line, spring it, and throw the weight again. So you can, only with sliding weight. Nice work. Let me have the camera. I got a first guy over here. You got it? Oh, there you go. There you go. Just stay on him. Yeah. Just look through there. You'll be good. Okay. Get okay. it on top. Just like a bass. Come on. Show me a, show me a pin. You saw it? Yeah. Got a big head like a striper. A striper. Oh. Hey, all right. Oh. I might bring it. That's all right. Just back up. Just bring it right to the mic. Tommy. We've lost so many strikers all of a sudden. I was right in the corner of the mouth. That way you get in the way. Keep that line tight. That's what you got it, John. Good job. Yep. Under the anchor line, you're okay. Let's see. Yeah, I saw him break out. You're good. You're good. Coming right Let's right back. It's coming right back, bro. Put this in the holder over there. Don't jump. Come on. Show me splines on that. It's right in the glare. I didn't see it. He's got lines on his side. Grab that net out of your head, Mike. Oh, yeah. Get him, get him. Quick, 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 John. Quick, quick, quick. See, Ron? Oh, he's on. See, he's on. It's, it's going to go nuts here another hour or two. Fish. John, yours is off? Beautiful fish, Tommy. Good job. You alright? You can make a rod if you don't. Can't do it. Oh, that's right. He's yeah, right. I told you. Yeah, he's injured. Oh. Two towards off the injured reserve list. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty fish, though. Look at it. It's not a big one. There you go. Come on, baby. It's a circle hook. You're not going to shake it, so. Come on, Captain. I take care of it. Look at it, look at it, come on. It's adorable. He's gorgeous. <laughs> it's a baby. <laughs> Get in my belly. Get in my belly. There you go. Good job. Beautiful, thank you. Good job, brother. Back off the injured reserve list. God, it wasn't 45 pounds. <laughs> yeah. His wrist would be gone. He went to the harbor. Good job. That really, that really fixes that problem usually. <clears throat> All right, got some obstacles. You got this. Take it, take it, go, go. 
Good one. I think this is you might need to pump a little. So pull up. And I said, what you Yeah, screamer. I think we got to go, guys. Oh, yeah. I'm a little bit of both of you guys. You take that drive. Yeah, that's a good one. Good, huh? That is a good fish. Oh, oh it's about time. Come on, don't try and horse it, man. That's it. Play him easy now. You got him close. Good job! Nice good job. Fish. That's a good one. Yeah. Purdy. Finicky today, man. Right in the corner of the mouth. It's that demon circle, that owner demon circle. There you go. Good one, Ron. All right, now stick it out to me. Got it. All right, record him, let him go. Should I just drop him in there? Yep, go a little closer if you like that. There you go, you just like that, there you go. Good job, brother. Good call on staying, Big Mike. Screamer. <laughs> Screamer. Oh, that's a good one. That's a howler, man. See if I can poke one. <laughs> Oh, he's off. Oh, no. Oh. It sucks. Had to be a bluefish. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, blue. it's bluefish for sure. It was a small one. Had to be. At least he didn't break this one off. Oh, still got the piece. You cast with a fish finder? Huh? Casting with a fish finder rig? From the beach. From the beach yeah. Gotcha. Live line, like in the, in, in the late summer, you get a lot of those spots. Somebody is sleeping on a junk job. Uh, I don't know who you're talking about. Is that what that is? Fishing on a crate. Fish on credit. Just go right over the top. Okay, it's coming. Striper! Yeah. Yep. Keep it away from the grill. Who got the net? Who got the net? What the heck? Woo, almost lost him. Yeah, I sort of got like, look at his tail by. Just right by the... Right by that. Barely anything. Stick that to your feet. Adorable. Listen, me holding this fish does no justice. I know it. There you go. Good job. Radio edit. Oh. Wow, that water looks really clear today. Jeff Bass, that fish shot off. What are you making here, bro? Why oh, don't, dude? Oh. Is actually, does anybody want the hot pepper? I mean, it might be blazing hot, but there's one. I'm gonna eat it. Nice. I got another one. Hot pepper for anyone? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll keep, keep it right away. No less skimming on that one. 
coming to yours. There he is. Oh, it's up here. Oh, yeah, there he is. Keep going, he's swimming with it. You got it. He's low. Bluefish? Uh, yeah. Uh, Everything's gone, I can feel it. Any harbor in the storm, right? It's all total protection. That's why the fish get stuck in here so long. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There's only one way in, one way out. It's that little bottleneck. They were right. I thought it was a shark. I saw the, the dorsal thing. Yeah. Huh? Oh, so it's the the oh yeah. You ever see the video when the guys see it and up in Boston? <laughs> I'm like it's a tuna, Jay. It's a fucking tuna. And then one guy goes, "No, it's a flounder." It's a hysterical video. They made it on the internet and they went on Letterman and Leno and because ah, okay. they they saw one. And their reaction's hysterical. They're like, kill it! You know what's funny? We can get rad. It's a tuner. Tuner. It was alien looking to see, man. Yeah. yeah. They changed the, They changed what they thought it was like five times. Plans, Ronnie. John, get away. <laughs> Run to code. Right, easy, go, easy, go. Easy. Oh, that's a good one, Ronnie. Take your time, Ronnie. Keep that line tight. Take your time. That's it. That's it. Bring, him, bring him right to him. Good work. Good work. Good work. Big nice, Ronnie. Good nice. job. Mike, you gotta get in the picture with this All right. one. Cool. Good fish, Ronnie. Hello. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. That's what we need. Wow, man. Striper stealth rods, man. Bait, cut bait, live bait, small bait, big bait. If it's bait, the striper stealth rods are great, man. Super soft tips. Now they got them indestructible soft tips. Tips of a butter. Yeah, those striper stealth rods are awesome. That thing! Nice! That's how you do nice. it. Nice. This chunk fish. Pretty. Pretty. Thank you, Captain. Good job. Uh, good job. Good nice. job. Nice job, bud. All right, so striper stealth rods. You guys uh, may have seen the other videos. Uh, CTF, Catch the Fever. I helped them a little bit design the striper stealth rod. And the main thing about this rod is it has a lot of backbone. 
but the tip is super soft. I mean, look how soft that tip is. And it, it's super important because when the fish picks up the bait, you want that fish to feel comfortable with it, not feel the, the rod. Go ahead and feel comfortable enough to swallow the bait, get it down in its throat, swim away, and slowly load the rod up. So the rod is loaded to the backbone. When the fish feels it, when the fish takes off, it sets the hook. Comes out, fish gets him in the corner of the mouth. Circle hook. We're using circle hooks everywhere in salt water anyway. I, I use them everywhere in fresh water as well. So if you use a circle hook or if you're using any kind of live or cut bait, that's what's great about these striper stealth rods. The super soft tip and you're not giving up backbone. You can see you got a lot of backbone towards the bottom here. This is the medium heavy. I like the medium heavy the best, but the, they're all good. I've used them all. And uh, Striper Stealth did give me a code. It is uh, Smedley 5. You get a couple bucks off and it supports us too. So they help us and help you, helps everybody. It's a great ride. We'll start with the hot dogs. Bought Nathan's, nothing's too good for this crew. Front, prime rib burgers, dollar store ketchup, dollar store mustard. <laughs> yeah, I have a kit with every tool available to man, and I'm burning my fingers. Yeah. No, honestly, <laughs> honestly, I did, did none of that. Man. Took all those hot dogs from your fingers. Rain bait. A whole bunch of little spearing. See that bird just threw it down and got it? A bunch of little tiny silver sides. All right, gentlemen, there's ketchup, mustard. In a the cooler, there's relish. Um, no, he said cook. All right. Well, it's a party without condom. Condom. condiments. Different condoms, too. Thanks, bud. Very nice job. Dad, back him, back him up. Back up. Yes. Yeah. 